I thank the chairman for recognizing me. For, for me personally, this bill in support of the Abraham Accords, it's good legislation, and the Abraham Accords were such progress. But the bill for me was direly close to losing my support. Uh, and that's because of uh, a portion of this that, that I didn't really think needed to be in the bill, but was added and speaking specifically about a two-state solution, which I don't necessarily think has to be in this bill. And the reason, in my opinion, we need to be so careful about how we speak of that is because simply what this committee itself has uncovered. And my amendment really adds something very simple, but I think it's an important protection. Uh, on page four of this bill, number five, it says, to continue support to a negotiated solution to the Israel-Palestinian conflict resulting in two states, a democratic Jewish state of Israel and a viable democratic Palestinian state living side by side in peace, security, and mutual recognition. And I request that we add the line that, that rejects the use of terrorism. And the reason what we've uncovered on this committee is so important for that, and I'll go over a couple of things that we've uncovered here. We had uh, polling by what was stated as the preeminent Palestinian pollster, Khalil Shakiki, said less than 40% uh, lower support than ever of Palestinians support a two-state solution. What was it that they supported instead of a two-state solution? a one-state solution, and that's not the state of Israel, that's a state of Palestine in absence of a state of Israel. Uh, and he actually said 84%, uh, this is the, again the preeminent pollster uh, for Palestinians as, as he was labeled here, 84% reject the recognition of Israel. That's a really important number. Uh, when we look at this and some of the other things that we've heard in this committee, June 7th hearing, Secretary of State Blinken. He stated that part of Abbas' calculation in canceling the most recent Palestinian attempt at elections was because Hamas would, quote, do well in such elections. That was a, a political way of dancing around that Hamas would win the elections. A terrorist organization would win the elections. We would have a made a, a second country and the government would be terrorists, and, and they would almost certainly get a seat at the United Nations. That's a reason to be very careful about how we speak about a second state, a second Palestinian state. At a July 21 hearing on examining the grassroots peace-building efforts between Israelis and Palestinians, our expert witness told us that Hamas is filling a void left by Palestinian authorities' incompetence and corruption. That was something else that was said about this. And it's well known by the intelligence community across the board that if there was a popular election held, Hamas would almost certainly win that. That is the assessment of the intelligence community. That's why it's important that when we have any mention of a second, a second state, a Palestinian state, that we mention that that cannot be a state that is comprised uh, comprised uh, of a government that will embrace the use of terror or has historically embraced the use of terror right up to earlier this year in the form of thousands of rockets being fired into Israel. And historically, bus bombings, suicide bombings, mall bombings, market bombings, restaurant bombings, vehicular manslaughter, stabbings, kidnappings, the, just in the last couple years, those have all been prevalent. That cannot be an entity that we make a government out of. And so in that, I would ask for support that we simply add something vitally important to this language uh, as it talks about a two-state solution that we insert, uh, that that be a, uh, a democratic Palestinian state that rejects the use of terrorism um, because that has been something that has historically defined uh, those that are the de facto government uh, of Palestinian people. In that, Mr. Chairman, uh, I ask for your support and I yield back.